If you want reliability from any aftermarket performance engine, a quality damper is one of those essential components that's so often overlooked. One of the questions we quite often get asked is, if I've already internally balanced all of my engine components, then why do I need an aftermarket damper? So we're here with JC from ATI Performance Products to find out why we do need these dampers. So JC, that question we quite often get asked, what would you say to that? You know, internally balanced versus externally balanced, that's fine. It really has nothing to do with the damper. The damper is going to be internal, external balance with your rotating assembly. And almost everything nowadays is internally balanced. So when that's finished, great. And that's for your bob weight and you know, your piston and, and your assembly going up and down. However, you still have your crankshaft. You still have your counterweights. You still have pistons being pulled, pistons being pushed, pistons sucking or have boost behind them. So you inherently have a torsional twist in the crankshaft. Torsional twist is a twist without a bend. If you have too much torsional twist, you get a bending moment. That's where you hurt oil pump gears, you fail alternators, you have clutches coming loose, and eventually you fail a crank. Uh, bearings is, is another thing that goes first. The damper's job is to counteract and dampen the torsional twist. So just like a shock absorber, you know, it rebounds the recoil of a spring your damper is rebounding the recoil of the crankshaft from when it's twisted to when it's trying to unwind. Right, so let's just go back and unpack a little bit of that there and uh, try and sort of break it down so it's a little bit easier to, to digest. So essentially what you're talking about there with the components being balanced, so we've got a crankshaft, maybe the flywheel, the pressure plate, etc. That's all being professionally balanced so we know that that's all within spec. Uh, balance all of the set of the connecting rods, the pistons, if it's a V configuration engine, those go into a bob weight that's added to the crankshaft journal when it is balanced. So even when all of that is perfect, perfectly balanced or as close as it can be to perfect. Uh, even if we take into account just one aspect is when a cylinder fires, that puts a force into the crankshaft. And while the crankshaft is nice and rigid when we've got it on the bench, really when we think about it, it actually becomes a bit like a, a very stiff spring. So that's that torsional movement that you're talking about that goes into the crankshaft? Yeah, correct. So you're, you, know, you have your main bearings, which are in line, in a straight line. Then you have your counterweights, which are off-center. And to counteract your rod, it's bolted to that, which is also off-center. So they have leverage twisting on the crank and when one's firing maybe with boost it's really hammering the crank one way and then all of a sudden another one is sucking the other direction and another one fires so as those add up through the firing pulses and the firing order that's where you get your torsional twist in the crank so your your engine balance let's say you're balanced to 50 percent uh, some guys that run nascar they balance to 51 52 53 percent so that your engine has a little bit of uh, inertia to keep going over and that also affects the damper but not greatly you know it really comes down to crankshaft uh, how stiff the block is how much your bob weight is what kind of rpm you're turning and and ultimately the torsional twist is going to be in any crank and a crank can withstand a lot of torsional twist for a short amount of time so as long as the damper's there to take care of the majority of the torsionals then your crankshaft lives longer your timing belt your camshaft everything lives longer and that's where your horsepower gain comes from as well because your valve timing stays where it should be all right so Let's talk about what happens if we don't have a damper. We see a lot of people in the aftermarket, uh, they will replace a factory damper, they won't go to an aftermarket damper like an ATI, instead uh, it's common to use a lightweight solid alloy front pulley. So you've got nothing there to absorb those torsional vibrations, so what are we likely to see with no damper? So it's a cheap, easy way out. Uh, you can underdrive pretty, pretty simple. And you know, the motor probably does feel snappier because you're taking four, five, six pounds off it. You can underdrive it. But you don't feel torsional vibrations. You'll feel vibration in a tire or a drive shift. You can kind of feel it if the motor's really winded up. You'll feel the motor fighting itself if, if you're really in tune and feeling for that and maybe in a stiff race car. But nine times out of 10, you're never going to feel it. Um, your first failure is usually an oil pump gear. Uh, which then is catastrophic after that. Uh, your worst failure would be a timing chain breaking and taking out all your valves and everything from the top end down. Uh, bolts coming loose, weird alternators breaking, flywheel or flex plate bolts coming loose, they're all sign of torsional vibrations. Um, you know, when Ford came out with, with the Coyote, they were breaking a lot of the oil pump gears. Guys made stiffer oil pump gears. Well, it, it was really your stock damper is made to work for stock horsepower, stock driving habits, and when you stretch those limits much wider, you need a damper that can really cover all those limits. So, so that's where it all kind of comes into play to 
you need a damper. There's very few vehicles that come today without a damper. Uh, Porsche is one of them, and they're fine on the road. As soon as they start doing any sort of road racing, they fail oil pumps. I think it's also important to mention there as well, like just because you haven't got a damper doesn't mean you're instantly going to have a failure, but the problem which we can't really see is as the RPM moves right through the rev range, we will have certain uh, rev ranges where there will be a resonant frequency and the problem is if we sit at that particular RPM for an extended period of time, uh, that, that resonant frequency does a hell of a lot of damage in a very short period of time, so that's where we really get into more serious issues as opposed to engines that are constantly moving through the rev range and moving through those dangerous resonant uh, RPM ranges quickly. So let's get on to the ATI damper. Can you tell us how the damper actually addresses those torsional vibrations and how does it get rid of them? Sure. So we're a rubber-based damper, elastomer O-rings. There's uh, eight in some of them, there's six in others, there's ten in some, depending on the application and what we can fit. We've got many different durometers from 40 through 90 durometer rubber every 10 points. So we, that durometer, you're talking about the stiffness of the, the rubber? Stiffness, yeah, from very soft at 40 to almost like concrete at 90, depending on what we're doing. Uh, we have a damper that weighs 2.3 pounds all the way up to 48 pounds. Alright, so just purely based on the number of potential options that I'm guessing you've got, given those, those different configurations you've talked about, how do you decide for a given engine what the ultimate setup is and how can you test and validate that? Yeah, well, we're, we're lucky. We've been doing dampers for almost 30 years, so we have a lot of institutional knowledge. We have our own torsion vibration testing equipment, so when a new application comes out, we can test it. Uh, we're in the process of installing a dyno in our shop to run our own torsional test, have motors come to us. But when, when we start with the OEM damper, we can see the uh, frequency the damper is tuned to, and that damper is tuned for a narrow RPM range. So I know as long as my damper will hit that, I'll hit below it and above it. So we can really pick the stock damper. I can see its weight. I can get an idea what the crankshaft weighs and and you know what the bob weight is and what it's going to be doing. Then you know more specifically if the customer is going to add 60 pounds of boost. We need to put a lot bigger damper on than the stock damper versus a guy that's running 300 horsepower with his Honda that's road racing. Then we can we know the damper will cover him. He's going to maybe stay from seven to eight thousand RPM all the time. We know we cover that right off the shelf. So, the institutional knowledge of the years and then all the applications we're on from, you know, old 100 horsepower Triumph motors to your latest greatest Audi, uh, Lamborghini motors, you name it. Uh, Kona Sig runs the damper as well. So once you've got one of these dampers for your engine, is this something that needs to be balanced along with the crankshaft or do you purposely make sure it isn't balanced with the crankshaft? You purposely leave it off. So the inertia weight inside is encapsulated with rubber. It can't come out, but it can move. So when you're trying to balance it, it's going to throw you off a little bit each time. When you have an externally balanced engine, an external balanced damper, we ship them unassembled so you can have just the weight part of it and do your balancing and then, then put it together. But you don't want to have the damper on the engine when your engine builder or whoever's balancing the crankshaft. So if it was assembled and on the engine, from what you're saying there, would you basically be getting a different imbalance every time you go and test it because of that weight moving? Yeah, so the inertia weight's able to move a little bit and not be solid, so you would just be fighting yourself trying to, you'd, you'd pull your hair out. Okay, so in terms of these dampers, uh, do you need to do any servicing work on them? Are they a fit and forget item or do they need to be rebuilt uh, over time? So that, that's part of the beauty of our design. You know, all the dampers are four to five individual pieces. Then we have the rings inside of them, uh, face decal, bolts, SFI decal. You can replace or rebuild any single part of that. Let's say a rock hits it and bends your outer shell, we can replace the outer shell for you if all the timing marks go away. Um, we have different rebuild applications for different engine applications, different horsepowers. As short as it each engine rebuild, as long as 10 years. If you're putting on a streetcar in a 69 Camaro, it's gonna go a couple thousand miles a year and turn 5,000 RPM, 10 years. And you can make the damper new, as where with others you just need to throw them out or, or guess. So. so I guess this is where someone looking at a particular application uh, could discuss with you and you're gonna be able to give them the information around the damper that's gonna suit their application and what sort of service schedule that's, that damper's gonna need for how they're using it? Exactly, we have um, on the different size dampers and the different applications, we have a, a service, recommended service schedule printed on the damper, also in the directions. Just if you're gonna spend all this money, a $30,000 engine, and you're gonna have it rebuilt at the end of a season, for another 75 bucks you can rebuild the damper and you know it's new.
Yeah. That's a no-brainer really. Now, you just mentioned the SFI Deco and this is another aspect that I wanted to touch on. So it's not just the ability to withstand the torsional vibration or get rid of those torsional vibrations that's important. In some uh, motorsport you actually have to get rid of that factory damper. So can you tell us why that's the case? Yeah, so most factory dampers are two pieces and the outside ring can come off and come out of the car. We've seen it, we've seen it hurt people, seen it leave the track, bounce off and, and hurt engines. So. Uh, you can still have an SFI damper that is built like that. Other companies make it, and they have um, snap rings to retain them. Uh, our inertia weight is totally encapsulated. You really have to do something catastrophic to have ours come apart. When we rebuild it, we check it for cracks. Uh, we'll change all the bolts. We'll rebuild the rubber, and that way we'll, we'll re-SFI it. The SFI test for us is they spin the damper at 10,000 RPM for an hour and then they make sure there's no cracks and they check the elongation and fatigue strengths of the metal. They do a metal, metal, metallurgy on it to make sure it's all within their specs. Sometimes they have us send them one. Sometimes they'll call Summon and order a product off the shelf so nobody plays games with that. It's safe. Now, when you're competing at any level of motorsport, it's nice to know that all of your engine components, including the damper, are going to stay uh, where they should be. Now, if anyone wants to find out more about your products or talk about a particular application, how can they reach out? Yeah, you can email tech at atiracing.com or sales at atiracing. All my sales guys are tech guys. Uh, we don't pressure to sell. We just want you to get the right part, whether it's ours or not. And then, of course, atiracing.com. We've got uh, there's a white paper on there about dampers 101, in really layman's terms uh, that I wrote a number of years ago for that. Uh, talks about some testing and tuning. And then Facebook, ATI Performance Products. Perfect. Look, thanks for the chat there, JC. Appreciate your time. Yeah, great questions. Thank you. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.